Oh. Yow! What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a yow vlog. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. I've been meaning to do one for a while. Uh, hopefully, the next one may be under happier circumstances. Some news came out uh, last night. Um, at least it was night when I found out about it. Um, ESCA basically uh, just settled um, the Bitcoin mining dispute uh, lawsuit, at least one of two, the one that was taking place in New Jersey. Uh, there's a further lawsuit going on in California that is more orientated towards uh, people that uh, lost graphics card or incurred uh, hardware damage, at least as far as I understand it. Now, this Bitcoin scandal, if um, you were not aware of it, it did make uh, the news across uh, the gaming spectrum. Um, it also was obviously a pretty big story in the TF2 community as well as the Counter-Strike community, um, pretty much the ESEA community. Um, and in that original scandal, basically, you know, ESEA, the players are required to use a client when they play. And uh, this client is supposedly just for anti-cheat. Um, and that is the main purpose of it. Um, it obviously is kind of tied into the whole point of ESCA. They always bring it up as, oh, you know, this is the main thing. And it definitely, you know, it, it ties into the stats and the server stuff. And that's other benefits of ESCA. Um, but this client is a big deal for him. And uh, the coder that was involved with the creation of the, or coding the client, um, Jaguar, uh, apparently, with uh, LP Kane's uh, consent, uh, started developing uh, code uh, to force the computers running the client to mine for bitcoins uh, while the computers were not in use. The code actually determined whether people were sitting at their computer, whether the mouse was being moved, um, and uh, wouldn't mine if people were present. Now, um, some of the details on this are a little bit sketchy, and uh, the one that is still kind of up in the air, but is also in the long term kind of irrelevant, um, and uh, also to start getting into this court document, because I want to use some of the language uh, from this court document. Um, the question is whether LP Kane um, actually realized um, that this code was implemented and that Jaguar was actively stealing uh, Bitcoins. Uh, from this uh, uh, legal document, you know, the one part that I really narrowed in on that, that does kind of leave this up in the air is uh, Defendant Thunberg, who is LP Kane, Eric Thunberg, supervised Hunk Zach, uh, that's uh, Jaguar, um, uh, Sean, I think is his first name, uh, supervised Jaguar's activities, provided Jaguar with input, and authorized Jaguar to use ESCA company time to develop, create, and test the ESCA Bitcoin mining code. Um, and then, uh, you know, Jaguar uh, pointed this code into wallets uh, that he controlled. And, and that's one area where uh, I'm a little confused over whether it's just straight up incompetence from LPK or maliciousness. Um, I mean, if you're going to say, oh yeah, Jaguar, why don't you, you know, try and do this Bitcoin thing and, and we'll see how it works. I don't really get how LP Kane <clears throat> could have authorized that or started that ball rolling and had no conception of where the money was going to go, what wallet it was going to end up in. So uh, that's pretty sketch to me. Um, but as I said, kind of the long term irrelevant as well. I want to talk about a couple other things that were directly from uh, this document, and then I'll, I'll talk some more about the follow-up of this. Um, okay, so at, these are these are quotes from the document, the uh, New Jersey court document. At least defendants, and I'm, I'm going to sub in the um, names that we know these guys by, at least defendants Jaguar and Thunberg, LP Kane, had full administrative access to all end users' computers. The ESCA software enabled defendants to not only monitor end-user computer activity, but also view and upload any and all end-users computer files. Uh, on another paragraph, in at least several instances, ESCA employees used the ESCA software to copy files from ESCA end-users computers. The ESCA, another, uh, another uh, uh, paragraph here. 
The ESEA monitoring code monitored computer activity even when end users were not using ESEA services and the ESEA software was not turned on. ESEA concealed the ESEA monitoring code and the ESEA software driver on end users' computers. ESEA also programmed the ESEA software to reload the ESEA monitoring code even if end users attempted to unload the driver. Now there's a couple things here. Um, you know, on one hand, uh, the, the paragraph about ESCA software copying files from ESCA end users' computers, um, that actually could just be the screenshots that the ESCA uh, client, you know, was taking of their computers to, sh to try to catch a, a cheater. Um, additionally, you know, on, on one side of things, um, you know, if the ESCA software was trying to reload uh, the client, if end users attempted to unload the driver, um, that kind of makes sense to me as well in the sense of an anti-cheat because if, uh, you know, if, if you run the driver at the beginning and then the service says, okay, yeah, this guy's good to go because he's running the ESCA driver, and then you just unload it or you unload it in between the checks if you know when the checks are, then you could just cheat. You could just do whatever you want. Um, there's no real problem there. Uh, what really is, though, uh, an issue with that aspect is the fact that the ESCA software is continuing to work when clients weren't connected to an ESCA server or didn't have the client on. So, uh, ESCA could be could have been completely spying on anybody that had the client <coughs> and that had the client installed at any point, because also I've uninstalled my client. And this driver sticks around. You you uninstall the client, and the driver is still there. Um, I've I've tried to uninstall the client. I haven't run a restart yet, so maybe maybe it's still there afterwards. Um, but that's definitely worrisome. Um, it's also just you know worrying that these guys have full admin access. Uh, I mean, in certain degrees, some of this client stuff um, needs to have that sort of access in order to assess things. If you didn't give it full admin access, you might be able to spoof some things. But, you know, there's a lot of shadiness going on with this. Um, also, what's what's very disturbing about this is uh, just the way that ESCA has handled this and continues to act afterwards. Um, basically, what, what this settlement contains is that ESCA is paying a fine of $350,000 up front with... Um, basically the rest of a million dollars, $650,000 uh, due to be paid if there are for further troubles or issues with ESCA. A lot of legalese in this document. I highly suggest if anybody's curious, uh, you check it out. I'll link it in here. Um, and uh, then also Jaguar got hit with a $60,000 fine um, that he is, uh, I think that the lower amount of that is $25,000 or $35,000. And he's already paid, uh, I believe, 2500 up front with, I think, another 2500 due pretty soon. So Jaguar is also getting into some serious trouble here. Um, in a sense, uh, uh, LP Kane has kind of thrown him under the bus. Uh, this is his company. This is a decision that his company made. And then Jaguar ran with it and put it into his own account. So, I mean, in some sense, yeah, Jaguar probably deserves some personal punishment. Um but uh, this is still a serious ESEA issue. Um, also, as part of ESEA's payment for this, they are deciding to settle this lawsuit, we'll call it. Uh, and by settling this, though, they've put an end to the process. Uh, but also, in the, case, in the course of settling it, they're saying, well, you know, here's this document where you've laid out all these things um, that, that I'm pulling from, and we're going to pay you $350,000, but... Uh, we don't agree with any of this. We're not admitting to any guilt. We're not admitting to anything that is in this document. Um, so K uh, LP Kane has, has paid to make this disappear. And, uh, you know, what's kind of upsetting about this and is telling about, you know, how ESCA handles things and ESCA and LP Kane, um, you know, <laughs> Uh, they, they issue this response, and now I'm going to start reading some of the things from the ESCA News uh, response about this. Uh, we want to make it clear to our community that we do not agree with the Attorney General's account of the Bitcoin incident. The settlement that was signed makes explicitly clear that we do not agree, nor do we admit to any of the state of New Jersey's allegations. Um, 
Inyan, you know, says that the Attorney General deep under deep misunderstanding of the facts of the case. And that's about it. I mean, their press conference and they said, Oh, you know, we're gonna move forward, we're gonna take every possible step to protect your privacy. Employee responsible was fired. Um, and you know, expect some things to come in the future. And uh, some of those things that he says is actually legally mandated by the settlement to hold to. They have to, you know, have these privacy statements. They have to have a third party uh, specialist come in and audit the software. Uh, you know, and then he says, oh, we're remain committed to moving forward with our customers. Um, and then, you know, LPK continues as well to just be really disrespectful about this incident and the lack of any super solid answers from this. Um, you know, they, they kind of had an initial round of responses when it first came out. And initially, LP came was super dismissive of this, being like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's just this thing we thought of, like, ha ha, it'd be really funny. Um, you know, like April Fool's thing. Or, you know, maybe we could get ESA people to pay their league fees with Bitcoining. Um, and was just really dismissive of, dismissive of how serious of an incident this was. And uh, he continues to be in the comments after this thread. I want to point out a couple ones. Um, somebody asks, are you not going to acknowledge that you and Torvald lied about Jaguar acting alone in the implementation of the Bitcoin mining? And LP Kane says, read the post. Uh, which, in the post, they basically say they don't agree with New Jersey saying all the things that they said, where they said that LP Kane knew that Jaguar was developing this. So, again, it's just one of those like, oh yeah, well, go check it out. We, we put the answers somewhere else. But there's no answers, you know. They've never really been super upfront about this process and about exactly what happened. He's also not upfront about uh, some of the concerns that people have about the fact that this uh, client is basically a backdoor. I mean, it, they have full admin access. They can use it whenever the client isn't even on. That's like a super worrying concern. If you're an anti-cheat client and the client has to be running in order to connect to a server, there's no reason to have it on or working while you're not trying to connect to an ESEA server. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's bogus. And uh, then again, LPK just kind of uh, brushes this off uh, disrespectfully and says, here's the TLDR. This was as big of a deal as they say it was, or as the uninformed try to make it, we would no longer be in business. Well, the thing is, is he paid $350,000 to make this settlement disappear, to take the easy way out. Um, he, I mean, that's that's what these businesses do, and uh, there's a lot of businesses out there that have paid large settlements to make uh, criminal charges uh, disappear. Um, that's that's like a whole another a whole another vlog that you know I get crap for posting Dota videos. I don't need to post politic videos, um, but you know that's that's something that companies do, and, and that's how it goes. Uh, he also uh, extrapolates on this. In the current U.S. legal system, even when you're right, it's sometimes a smarter decision to simply write a check and walk away, as wrong as that sounds. Well, uh, that's also bullshit. Um, you know, if, if, you are, if you are right, um, you fight these charges uh, because you, you can get your legal fees, fees paid for, essentially zeroing the equation out. Um, and you can walk away with your head held high and, and cleared of, of what people are accusing you of if, if they were wrong. But, but the, the state of New Jersey, if there's anything in this statement that is factually wrong, um, it's very minor in compared to uh, what ESCA actually did and, and what they're probably going to continue to do uh, to certain degrees. Um, just the other thing about this that is so just kind of upsetting and, and worrisome um, my, my homeboy, uh, Keeker DC, uh, pointed this out in a tweet. Um, you know, if LP can is making this such a big deal, well, it, it's just like, oh yeah, whatever, dude. Like we just paid $350,000. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, he, he made that money off the back of the ESCA customers. Um, he's in that position to be able to just brush that off and be like, yeah, no big deal because they're making a killing off of people. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, the customer service of ESCA has always been so dismissive of, of people and their concerns. And he's like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, and they know that they're the, they're 
essentially the, the biggest game in town. They, I wanted to say only game in town, but that's not true. But they, they act like they're the only game in town. Uh, some of these competitive players actually kind of further this belief that they are the only game in town. And um, Counter-Strike Go players and TF2 players have uh, not wanted to ditch ESEA because of that belief. But uh, we've reached this point where uh, you got to do it. you got to do it. I am personally very, very sick of the way that ESEA has treated uh, its customers and its community. Um, I'm sick of uh, the way that LP Kane presents himself uh, publicly, the way that he just thinks that this is all a joke uh, while he's rolling around in his private plane and taking trips to Venezuela. Um, it's He's making good money off of this, and he doesn't give a shit. I was going to use a stronger language, but I held myself back. Um, and that's really uh, disappointing, you know, and... Um, while ESCA has, in some sense, done some positive things for the TF2 community, I I think that we could do better. I think that they could do better. And I think at this point in time that it's best for us to move on from ESCA. Um, I know that's a really difficult, like, scary thing for people in the community um, to think about. Um, but, you know, I, I made the comparison. I, I try not to get too involved in forums lately, but this thread was crazy so I had to chip in um, to me it's just like a, a domestic abuse victim um, where you believe that you only have one option and, and you know you can never find somebody who who would love you like that um, or they have all these positives oh, these redeeming qualities there's, there's these redeeming qualities no he's a good guy he's a good guy um, but you know you can't let yourself get stuck in a cycle of abuse where Oh, well, you know, they, they made some really terrible admin decisions and screwed the league over. Well, they probably won't do that again, you know. Oh, well, LP Kane came down really hard on this and treated a bunch of people like shit on, on his forums. Well, he, he probably won't do that again. Oh, fucking huge uh, Bitcoin scandal uh, where their client is doing all sorts of crazy stuff that we don't know about. Oh, they're, they're probably not going to do it again after this. And it, it'll just keep going and going and going. Um, the longer that we stay with them and convince ourselves that they're the only game in town, that's the longer that they're going to be the only game in town. We have to create something else. We have to do something else. And I also think it's at this point that it's like, if we walk away from ESEA and the competitive sixes uh, community as we know it um, falls apart, then at least we stood up for ourselves and walked away from ESEA. Because I, I think this Bitcoining is, Bitcoin mining is, is over the top. It, it's, and it's worse than just Jaguar. I mean, Jaguar pulled some supreme bullshit, um, but LP Kane is just rolling with it. Um, and, and I think that it, it's time to say goodbye to ESEA. It's time to move on. And it's time to find something better. Because here's the other truth of the matter is that ESEA hasn't made any positive strides in what they're offering since, I don't know, when, when they made the land was like season six or something like that. We're in season 15, and it's the same thing. It's a client, it's stats, um, it's uh, STV demos. I mean, there's some cool things with ESEA, don't get me wrong. And I do, you know, um, personally, my coverage will suffer because uh, ESCA always has STV demos that you can download, so you can just grab them whenever, and that's not a problem. No other league in North America is doing that. Uh, I don't believe any league in Europe is doing that. Um, but at the same time, we just got to walk away from these scumbags. Um, and I, I think that other stuff is going to surface. Um, take a look at TF2Center.com, which is uh, you know a new lobby system that's in development. It's got awesome features. Uh, it's looking really slick, look really sharp. Um, competitive TF2 is not going to die uh, with the loss of ESEA. That's also the reason why I feel comfortable what I was saying earlier about why we should walk away from ESEA. Because even if it does die, we, we've held our heads up high, we've done the right thing. But it's not going to die because people don't play competitive TF2 for ESEA. ESEA is not the only reason that they're staying in there. They're staying in with competitive TF2 because competitive TF2 is fun to play. That's the secret. Um, you know, we've lost players over the years, but we've also grown with so many new players and so many things going on. Um, you know, and I, I think that UGC 6s is a, a valid alternative. 
Um, there's certainly a lot of things that uh, it could do better. Um, you know, I talked about a lot of that hardware stuff. Uh, we don't need a client. We do not need a client. Um, UGC doesn't have one, and that's great. That means that if there's a patch, we can most likely play that night. You know, there's not going to be a huge reschedule because uh, they didn't get the client organized before the start of the season. Um, all sorts of ridiculousness, and I, I think it's just time to move on. And if the players are still playing, and, and we still want to have fun, we want to get scrims together, we want to get lobbies together, then this other stuff is going to show up. It's going to show up organically. Um, as, as long as we're stuck in the cycle with ESCA, it's not. It's not going to develop. Um, the other biggest thing I guess I should address, uh, just to find, find, uh, finish up, round up this uh, video, uh, this, this is really long, um, is that uh, the LAN, the issue of the LAN. Now, you know, the LAN has been one of the things that ESCA has been pushing and uh, is one of their biggest features. Um, you know, that other stuff, all the web stuff is, is pretty cool, but the LAN has been, uh, has been pretty cool for the community. But at the same time, you know, we've had issues with the community and uh, I guess corporate sponsors or, or team sponsors and the team to actually being able to get to the land, uh, at, you know, actually being able to get to the land uh, without having to turn to um, the community for financial support. You know, the the prize pool of ESCA TF2 has actually gotten better. It's it's better this season, um, but you know, the fourth place prize is uh, two hundred seventy dollars per player, um, basically to to travel to get there. Um, without having to pay anything else out of their own pocket. So this land, you know, is actually uh, a financial burden on the fourth place teams, pretty much the third place teams as well. Um, also, these teams are the teams that, uh, you know, perhaps are, are not as established or barely skimming into the playoffs. Um, so we're having a lot of problems getting those teams to the playoffs. The prize pool can't support flying those teams there. Um, and... <clears throat> Even with the top level players, um, you know, it, it, the players that are winning LAN, um, they get a nice, they get a nice check, they get a nice bonus, but it's, I don't think it's changing anybody's lives, you know, nobody's uh, becoming a pro TF2 player because of ESCA, um, you know, and if you look at other scenes and, and um, other games, uh, most of those other games as well, they are... Uh, they have an abundance of tournaments with an abundance of sponsors, and there's a ton of events going on. Um, ESCA, in my opinion, has, has dropped the ball in a lot of ways. Um, I guess, obviously, since this is a 25-minute video. But um, in terms of their sponsors and, and using the sponsors to, to grow the, the league and the game, uh, it hasn't happened. Um, they don't put out exposure for the sponsors. I mean, they... They could be having, uh, you know, weekly casts, shouting out BenQ, all this stuff, uh, really being involved with these things. And they've, they've done it to, to a little bit of a level, but they haven't really been making the, the exposure of the game um, in order to promote the game. I mean, you know, if you look at why hasn't TF2 broken through, you know, well, maybe it's our reliance upon ESEA. Um, also, in regards to, to, to a land scene, you know, a lot of people in the threads and stuff are saying, well, this land only benefits the, the, the top four teams. Those are the only teams that get involved. And essentially, too, I mean, we're putting a lot of money in the ESCA from, you know, top down. All these players, all these players in open, their um, premium payments, uh, their league fees, we're putting a lot of money in the ESCA. And in, in my opinion, the, the LAN is kind of just a way to, to flash it out and be like, oh, yeah, everything you guys paid for is worth it. Um, but, you know, we've had to have these community fundraisers to, to get these top teams there. And I don't see why we can't have community fundraisers uh, to have other local LANs and, and really um, have tournaments involving those LANs and, and make those things happen. I also think that regional LANs are super, super important. Um, for one reason, it's... Um, uh, TF2 community players getting together and being like, oh yeah, you're that guy I see in lobbies all the time. Like, you're a really cool dude. Um, and getting people more connected and, and, and more, I, I guess more connected is about all I can say. Because, I mean, meeting players in LAN, you know, you really establish this like, oh, that's who that guy is. Like, no, he's a good dude. Um, you want to you wanna play with him, you want to continue playing with him, you want to see him around. 
you know who he is as a person. And I, I think that's really important, really crucial uh, to the continued growth of the competitive community. It, it strengthens bonds between players. Um, and I also think it's it's really important for um, spreading TF2 to other gamers and other esports. Um, you know, getting people to be like, wow, that was really cool. Like, I've never seen TF2 before, but I watched some of that tournament, and that was awesome, you know. Um, providing the, you know, more of an opportunity of the stuff like I-46 and I-49, um, cool stuff like that. Uh, ETS LAN, um, GXL LAN, uh, South, uh, West, or whatever, whatever they call it, but the, um, NorCal LAN Fest is, I guess, what I was going to say. All the LAN Fests are cool, and I, I think the only thing, just to wrap it up on that, is that with the LANs, you know, the TF2 community, uh, community has to come together with a rule set that is very easily accessible um, for LAN administrators and say, hey, here's, here's the package, here's how we like to play, here's how TF2 should be played. Um, but I also want to say with that that um, that rule set should also be perhaps a little bit more open to uh, the general public of TF2 because I've been to some lands where it's like oh yeah we're going to have this like sixes tournament and then some guy comes up it's like oh yeah I pub TF2 all the time I want to play but are you guys like banning all the weapons that I use all the time and it's like oh uh, yeah we're, we're banning those and he's like well that's how I get my kills in pub servers you know and if you're going to ban all this bullshit I don't want to play and uh, that's unfortunate but that's I mean that's kind of how some of these players feel where um you know, while Sixes is restricted to promote the game type and to get things going, it can be harder for other people to get involved with it. But I, I believe that if we, we solve that problem, we attack that problem, we start looking at other leagues, uh, you know, pushing SIBO further, uh, working with UGC to get a next season, and possibly creating some other, you know, community events that are going on. Oh man, I got cut off by my own camera. Uh, but you know what, I, I really should have wrapped things up probably about like five minutes ago. So let's just get out of this vlog. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys, If you, especially if you stayed all the way through. Holy shit, what a video. Um, but screw you, SEA. Uh, final thought. You know, I, I think that uh, the second uh, mix-up versus uh, it matchup might be my last ESCA cast ever. Uh, that's kind of uh, crazy, but you got to stick with your guns. I don't want to support that organization. I don't want to get involved with them uh, anymore. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. Um, I, I love the TFT community so much, um, and I love TF2 as a game. But I can't. I can't continue to promote what they do. Um, they're a pay-to-play league, and they've taken advantage of their customers. They've taken advantage of the community, and and I don't. You know, I've had problems before, uh, feeling like they're taking advantage of people and then giving them free coverage and free exposure and putting their name out there and basically saying to the community like oh this is where it's at you know this is the best at TF2 if you want to be awesome at TF2 you gotta join ESEA I don't I don't want to be a part of that anymore um, I, I want to show high, you know quality TF2 I want to showcase sixes as well as Highlander and um, I don't want to showcase ESEA so Leave me your thoughts on that, um, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Max Dunn. I'll see you next time. Peace out!